by um, Hippo Keeper at the Canadian National Zoo, Allison Tarr, Allison Plus on the internet. Um, I am also joined by Canadian Keeper at the Hippo National Zoo, um, Chris Reynolds. Uh, I keep Canadians Plus. at the Hippo Zoo. The Hippo National Zoo, yes. The National Hippo Zoo. Okay. At the Hippo Campus, we call it. Right. Okay. Great. <laughs> this is this is why I shouldn't do intros, really. <laughs> yeah, they either get really long or or so short that no one knows that we're done with intros. Um, <laughs> this show is about uh, kind of nothing um, until it's about something, and then, well, then all heck breaks loose. Um, so ordinarily, uh, Allison shows up with a topic that Chris and I know nothing about. And then we speak on said topic, um, or theorize on said topic, or avoid said topic until the point of the show um, when we frantically ask, answer reader questions that you have submitted at binaryjazz.us or on Twitter. Did we get any Twitter questions this week? Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I'd like to um, take a minute. Um, I was at WordCamp Denver. Uh, nice. was in Denver. That was cool. Uh, I've never been to Denver before or Colorado for that matter, really. Um, and the first talk I went to was an accessibility talk and it was given by a deaf person. And, um, she talked about the importance of accessibility, which I kind of already knew. And her first example was, uh, she was talking about some book she was reading and, um, the book called to go to a website at the end of each chapter to listen to a podcast episode about the things that were discussed in the book. And of course, being deaf, she went to the podcast episode and it's a podcast and there's no audio transcription for people who cannot hear. And this uh, kind of hammered home. I was like, hey, I've got a podcast. We also are doing that. So, uh, wait, time out. We're in the are, are episodes a reference in the last chapter of books? <laughs> well, I would know. Okay. Um, I was almost super excited and kind of flabbergasted I missed that. But no, to your point, to, uh, it's, to uh, point. it's not very thoughtful of, of us to right, not to provide not transcripts. Any kind I of think we're all in agreement. Yeah. yeah. So, but of course, transcribing requires either people or money. So uh, this is where I call to our wonderful listeners. Um, you can either volunteer as a transcriber for us. That would be awesome. Or be awesome. Uh, if, if we uh, do attempt to transcribe our, uh, our show, <laughs> that means that we actually have operating costs, which we've never really had before. Uh, the website sits on a digital ocean box that Gary already had and was using. So it's really like virtually no money. The domain is like, uh, I think I bought it for 88 cents from Namecheap. Um, for the first year. So again, virtually no money was spent on this show, um, but transcribing. <laughs> Just in case there was like any ambiguity. Yeah. If you're a new listener, you'll realize very quickly the production budget is, is <laughs> <it's> not very. <laughs> right. So, um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, um, that so the cheapest transcription transcription service I saw I found that you know actually has a human being listening to it because there are like computerized transcription services and Gary demoed a couple of them and they're awful or at least one uh, we're trying one in this episode by just recording ourselves in Google Docs and seeing how that works and that would be another one um, but uh, also it's not going so well on my end yeah I think you need to have the tab um, oh no yeah it's not recording me too. Um, maybe it needs to be active. I don't know. Uh, 
anyway, yeah, it's not going so well either. Um, so, so that leaves this, uh, a couple like actual transcription services that use human beings. And, uh, for those, those cost actual money. And one of them for us, uh, based on the length of our shows and how often we record them, um, would be roughly 24 bucks a month. So that means that we have a goal of 24 bucks. So we're going to put a button on our website that says, give us money or something. And then you can help, uh, help our podcast be more accessible to people who have hearing impairment and yeah that's my plug i'm done all right i, I i've been a little uncomfortable with this, that allison has been quiet to this point in the show no i'm just i've been just listening i've been taking it all in and also this the I, i'm i'm troubleshooting my my google doc situation I, every yeah. time I click the microphone button on mine, you all turn into robots for a minute. Huh. Um, okay, which is fun. I mean, I don't, I don't mind that experience. You're seeing my true form. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's fine. Google has your inner both. soul comes out. Yeah. Google knows an awful lot about both of you. It's a little disturbing. It does. Um, we can probably just ignore Google for whether. I mean, we can figure out. Maybe, maybe it's I can this figure. far. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, maybe we can. Um, maybe we can. Maybe I can just play the episode back and have it listen and see if that works. I don't know. Ooh, maybe you should play it backwards. Can put, we can put some spooky music underneath it and see if Not there's like any hidden messages. Not backwards. <laughs> <laughs> the exact opposite of accessibility. <laughs> <laughs> what our goal is. <laughs> only if we can actually, only if we can talk backwards, that would be a good episode. Oh, That's man. But I think you need to have the script transcribed first in order to uh, appropriate, accurately talk backwards. I can hardly talk accurately forwards most of yes. I've tried. I've tried doing that. I've tried uh, doing the the Twin Peaks thing, um, and it's interesting because you need to have like the letters go out the window. You need to like um, basically type out or write out the sounds that you're trying to make in reverse and uh you kind of have to like listen to what it you kind of have to speak normal and then record it and reverse it and then listen to that and then retype that again phonetically backwards yeah it's possible it's it's it's, it's definitely doable very difficult wow i was thinking about making those sounds in my mouth i wonder if i was mouthing while i did that but Probably. Yeah, I was having difficulty with just some random words I thought of. <laughs> I just think I, of I, the, I, the, the, what is it, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious when she does it backwards from Mary Poppins. Anyway, also not accessible. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so the topic this week, I enjoyed last week's topic so much <laughs> that I use that as the jumping off point for this topic. <laughs> so yes. it's another, it's another comic book word. Maybe. War! No, um, I just, I feel like I'm on a trend as far as like how I'm discovering new things or things that pique my interest. But um, mm. anyway, not that there, there are no clues or hints here, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but this week's topic is a Brannock device. Brannock device. It's spelled B R A N N O C K. Brannock. I um. <laughs> I, I I think that I might know what this is, but okay. I've said that before and been yeah. totally wrong. So well, that's true. Let me put forth what I believe it is, and then Allison will vigorously shake her head, and then we can. Well, we can but that's the thing is like when it, it happens often enough that should do you even want me to acknowledge whether you're right or do you want me to just let you go and see <laughs> no it's probably more fun if you just let us go um so i i think that a brannock device is um a um it's a medical uh thing um that you place like an infant in for chest x-rays that isolates their arms I'm fairly certain that's a brand of um, And they hate it. And maybe it's a um, And uh, 
um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's a horrendous thing because it's just plastic isolation from the straps around their chest and holds their arms so they can't move during the x-ray because that's something you're not supposed to do. Uh, yeah, I believe that's a brand place. Plastic? Oh, because it's an x-ray. Um, yeah, there's no metal on it. So the yes. whole device is made out of plastic. Based on that question, I'm guessing this is, this is not what we're talking about. <laughs> well, just be, look, just because I bring a topic to the table doesn't mean I'm the expert in it. <laughs> I feel like you'd know that it wasn't made out of metal, though, if it was made for expert. I, I do a fair bit of reading and book reports on these things, but I don't <laughs> profess yeah. to be a full-fledged Well, now I need to know what that device is called, because it seems like a medieval torture thing, but it's made out of plastic, so it's clearly not from Middle Ages. When, uh, when my son was born, we, we came home with this because uh, he had jaundice and they freaked out about it um so we came home with this you know basically little min miniature uh tanning bed kind of the way you move like this i think you would say iron <laughs> yeah well I'm ironing your son yes well kind of uh we're like starch a, like a special heat lamp almost for babies right yeah it's it's a, like a it's like a suitcase and inside, you open up the suitcase, and it's got all these like. <laughs> so look on your face. You open the suitcase, and it's got all these like UV bulbs, uh, and you put the baby on the bulbs, and you leave the baby there, like with the UV light shining on them for like an hour at a time or something. And it's it cracked it's me up when you said suitcase because I will I will pluck Charlotte up from the changing table sometimes with just one arm and. She cracks up like when I carry her under my arm, so she <laughs> but just like pluck her up with one arm and it, it struck me as humorous. This is of all the ways to like, I mean, John, like John, just like it's a, a fairly common. Yeah, you could you could do the suitcase, you could do the torture suitcase, or you could just take your baby outside. <laughs> Those are but two of options. Ways, of all the ways to panic, perhaps already nervous parents, I feel like. <laughs> Both that sound effect and, <laughs> and the briefcase of, of devices is like a way of, of just promoting like extra stress where yes. it's just like, oh, this is a solvable thing. Yes. Yeah. And it's totally sold as, as something like, you know, you need to do this. Um, it's not. It's <laughs> not this inside. It's not even in, like an option. Like you need to, you need to bring this horrible torture suitcase with you. Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> uh, that's not a Branach device, though. A uh, Branach device uh, is... Um, see, I, I, I went to the London Dungeon. Uh, oh, I'm never still on torture. Yeah, museum uh, in, in London, obviously. Uh, and so I feel like I, I know quite a bit about torture devices. And I feel like the Branach device should be one of those things. So... Um, well, obviously it's not, um, the box that has the spikes. In it. What is that thing called? Oh, an Iron Maiden. Yes, it's definitely not an Iron Maiden. A, a Brennan can like Maiden! Quar. See, I, it did. It, it's coming full circle. <laughs> uh, a Brennan device is, is perhaps the, the, um, the glass jar that is placed over the victim's stomach with the rat inside. And the oh. rat has to eat its way out. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Um, let's so the, go to the jar. Like completely away the from the device. device. <laughs> I think Stay early device in the morning for that sort of thing <laughs> is a is a description of a particular tool that solves like it's a it's a uh, tool that solves only one problem. So. Like Named a citrus Robert juicer Brand. would not be a Brannock device because you can juice any kind of citrus with it. But um, <laughs> that big old, like, um, you know, like the apple thing, you, you apple blade that cuts it into pieces and mm -hmm. crap all at the same time, the big one they sell for, for pineapples would be a Brannock device because you really can't do anything else but cut pineapples with it. They sell one of those for pineapple, just for pineapple. I can't imagine how you would, I mean, like, oh, my arms hurt thinking about it, but yes, they do. But also, like, you, I, the there's apple no pineapple Brannock device and you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was obviously named after Robert Brannock, who right. was successful. Who was successful in that he could only ever do a single thing. Oh, Oddly enough, it was mouse surgery. <laughs> so he wasn't a good multitasker, and 
You really embraced that one thing at a time. Monotasking, yes. Yeah. We do okay. live in an age where multitasking is getting out of hand. <laughs> is, is that in reference to me walking and talking on a podcast at the same time? Is that hmm. where you're headed with that? <laughs> you, have, you have so many, <laughs> you're juggling so many things at once during during the podcast. You've got- I, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I've, I feel like I've been very disciplined, like, Minus one episode. Like I close Slack and I don't work on anything except for one episode. Um, and then today it was just weird. Like that neighbor finished mowing the lawn. Perfect. It's going to be quiet. And then as soon as I sat down, the other neighbor was like, let's torture this wood. <laughs> <laughs> Using a Brannock device. <laughs> hey, Fred, how's that Brannock device working out for you? <laughs> Would a table saw be a Brannock device because you can only cut wood with it or... Like you can cut other things with it, but you have to change out the blade. Well, no, because changing out the blade makes it mul like a um, multi-purpose yeah. tool. So never mind. Clearly, not a brand device. Because <laughs> changing out Maybe the blade, if... different blades for different purposes, was that the? Yeah, the blade itself would be a brand device, but the circular but the, saw but would not the blade, be. Blade, but would the blade be a device in itself? Because the blade is just part of a thing, not the thing itself. I, I have one more theory to switch gears one more time. It's probably like a language construct. So a Brannock device oh, yeah. um, is, is like a way you would present an idea that is um, least objectionable to all parties. Like, you could say it that way, but a Brannock device might be dot, dot, dot. See, I, feel like a, I feel like a Brannock device is, is something in, a, in science fiction. Named after, like the a, of, named after the clan of Brannock. <laughs> Brannock! We are, from, we are Brannock. From like Brannock, we are. Good hard consonant. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be so disappointed in myself if it's a Star Trek thing. <laughs> it's, okay, well, it's not. I'll, I'll let I'll You're let like, I'll let you be disappointed in yourself for other reasons. <laughs> I will no give you problem. Answer, Got not... that covered. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess it could be referenced at some point in Star Trek, but it's not a, I cannot, like, it's not, not like a Dyson it's not canon. <laughs> yeah. um, every time we say a lot Dyson, of area. every time we say Dyson Sphere, all I can think of is a giant circular hot dog. Oh, man, it's so disgusting. That word is taken on such a weird, <laughs> that can unpleasant only be fully, That can only be fully cooked by electrocution. Oh. <laughs> I think it's, it is funny. This how Dyson often, Sphere is a little on the rare side. Yeah, it's a little more time. It is funny how often it comes up for me mentally now, where I'll see something, I'll be like, Dyson Sphere, and then I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> a weird, like, it's kind of like a sinking feeling in my stomach, but then I start laughing, because it's also funny. <laughs> Do we need a glossary for this show on the website? Uh, I think we will. I think, yeah. I don't know that we've gotten there yet. Uh, I mean, right now, it would like the entire glossary would be Dyson, Dyson Sphere. Sphere. Yeah. Gross. And then the description. Right? <laughs> Just gross. Oh. Yeah, that, that was a Californiaism right there. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the okay, first, I remember, uh, that was the first time you went full on California for me, though. <laughs> I wonder what Google Docs thought, that, thought you were saying. <laughs> gross. I don't. E I don't even think Google Docs is recording me anymore. I keep trying to bring it back. Google says Dyson Sphere. I'm out. <laughs> it's like I want no part of this. Uh -uh. They won't stop uh -uh. talking about this Dyson Sphere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, would, if we do have a glossary, would a glossary include our best definitions of all the past subjects, or would it be? Mostly just recurring themes. I was thinking reoccurring themes because otherwise I feel like we'd be creating a fake glossary <laughs> <laughs> reference. That well, it'll also be a bit of, it would also kind of be spoilers uh, for anyone who hasn't listened to the entire, you know, entirety of the show. But let's be honest, who's going to, um, who's <laughs> going to read it? I guess somebody looking for, somebody for looking for transcripts would probably yeah, read there it you in go. lieu of transcripts. So yeah. it might be or better content. If you're oh, not yeah, the glossary be better content. So lose your hearing, enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I've, I've definitely read podcast transcripts when I just don't feel like listening to things. That was what I would, that's a couple people said that. Yeah. Besides, I mean, not just for accessibility reasons. Sometimes you just don't want to listen to the freaking podcast. Oh, no, I was agreeing with that. I was saying that the glossary would be a better alternative to show transcripts, be more enjoyable. <laughs> more enjoyable. <laughs> What about our, you're, you're cutting ourselves short for, for comments, like for compliments on our own banter. Um, well, there's a lot less, um, and hesitation in response in the glossary, I would suspect. It's like more, more forethought, more, just better, better constructed than the English that I'm forming right now. In my <laughs> I was on a call yesterday with this dude and he was in a library and behind him were these like gold, gilded frames of like old dudes with powdered wigs and such, right? Um, I'm like, who are those guys? He's like, I have no idea. So we decided that they were the Git forefathers. <laughs> and that in their day and age, you had to commit code with like hammer and chisel. So I don't know that that tracks. Uh, Let's circle back to why is he taking call in a library? I'm not sure if it was like a library, like a public library, or if he was in a mansion and this happened to be the room that was a library. I, I didn't go down that path to find out. I sort of suspect it was the second because, yeah, because he was loud. So I sort of suspect it wasn't a public library. Um, maybe it was so, his family so, library. I don't know. I'll ask him today now, now that you mention it. Like, so instead, instead, of assuming, in instead of assuming it was a public library because he was yes. loud, you yes. automatically assume that he is in the mansion of someone being loud in their room that is a library right he's in yes. bruce wayne's library <laughs> just some random mansion that has its own library. i don't think it's random i don't think he, like randomly i mean he got their wi-fi password so he must have some relationship with them excuse me mister can i use your library hey buddy what's going well, on uh hi there royalty can i use your library i gotta make a call side note have either of you been to the library of congress no. In Washington, no. D.C. I have not been to D.C., so I have not been to the Library if of Congress. If you ever do, go, because it is amazing. Also, hot tip, you can get a library card there if you tell them you're doing some family research. <laughs> and it is the most excited I have ever looked on a library card, because there's a photo <laughs> of me. <laughs> I'm just, oh, I love that. I'm pumped to be there. And also, if you have a library card, um, you can actually like go into all the cool reading rooms and not just see them from where you um, take the tour. Um, hmm. yeah. Wow. Anyway. What is in the Library of Congress? So many things. They have uh, this amazing, they do have actually an amazing like family tree heritage room where, and their librarians are super helpful. And just, I mean, like, I don't know, librarians sometimes are a bit cranky, but these librarians are very much they're just so excited to look all the things up. They don't it's, treat it like a hassle. <laughs> it's, it's like, is that where you, like some, in every industry, right? There's like the place you go to if you're like a rock star in that industry or not the rock star. If you're like the, the best at what you do, right? You end up there. Is, is the Library of Congress, like if you're a librarian, is that ultimately like, like we get, we get who we want here. Like we get the best librarians. Like we kind of pick like who we want working here. It's not a, we don't I mean, settle. I like to think so for their sake, where they're just like, I'm the yeah. head, I'm the head librarian, like of the country, basically, or of yeah. the pinnacle library, librarians of the country. I don't know. People like that are the kind of people I want to go to parties with. Like, the head I, like mingling at parties is always so boring. But if like the head librarian of the Library of Congress were there, oh my God. So awesome. I'm reading this book uh, to the kids. Uh, for bedtime called The Grim Legacy. Uh, and it's just mm -hmm. a young adult fiction uh, about a, a library that's not really a library because it's just a library of objects. Um, and these objects have been collected through over time uh, from various things. And they're like just, they're like historic, like Marie Antoinette's wig and like, uh, the uh, mirror from Snow White and, you know, just other things. So, so there's, there's all this stuff uh, that's accessible to any of the patrons of this library. 
uh, that's not a library, it's a repository. And, um, but there's also these special collections that if you're a special patron or you have a special card or whatever, then you can check things out. And the special collections, like there's the Grimm collection and there's the Wells uh, bequest. And there's uh, the Gibson Crestomancy, which is all software. Um, and, and in these special collections, the, uh, the, all of the things in those collections have like special properties. So everything in the Grimm collection is magic. And the Wells bequest is all like science fiction, uh, actual real science, like an actual shrink ray and an actual time machine, that sort of thing. Um, and it was written, the person who wrote this book was actually a page at like the New York Public Library or something. So like it's, the, the characters in the book are pages at this repository and then like in a page a library at the repository basically the, is the runner and like goes and gets the thing when somebody requests a thing. So the person who wrote the book actually was had that position at one point in time, uh, which I find interesting. And it seems to have some sort of like weird insight into libraries and also kind of how people who work in libraries think. <laughs> like how they fetch things and like yeah well not just that but like like wouldn't it be cool if like this book was like actually a magical spell spell book and people could check check it out yeah oh, one amazing. of the devs i work with was a uh, librarian in a former life well i guess in the current life but um <laughs> like, wow that is magical <laughs> yeah i i realized like jumping off what chris said that sounded like not i meant intended um, <laughs> but as a result like the way he thinks um, is very interesting to me when he approaches cataloging data. Um, yeah, and the, the other thing that, that was interesting about this, about this book is the way that they interview new pages is like, here's a box of buttons and I want you to sort them. And there's no right, there's no wrong, I just sort the buttons. And it's like various things. So like, do you sort them by color? Do you sort them by size? Do you sort them by like time period? Do you sort and each person who, who each character has, has sorted the buttons in a, in a unique way. And, and then for each, for each character, the person interviewing them throws in something that's not a button, but still needs to be sorted with the buttons. So like a zipper or a paper clip or something else and so like the challenge is like well what do you, how do you, how do you yeah how do you catalog, catalog this thing that is obviously not part of this collection but you're being forced to put this new entry into his collection of stuff oh interesting that's the sort of puzzle like i could see myself obviously being a librarian that's the sort of puzzle i can get behind <laughs> <laughs> Allison's gonna go look for this book after the show. I totally am. <laughs> like my library so opens in approximately. <laughs> Remind me again, what was the topic? Uh, Branick device. 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 Yeah. Can I ask what it is now? <laughs> you can ask. The can question ask is whether or not you'll get an answer. <laughs> that would go in the glossary. You can ask because that happens every week too. <laughs> can I have the origin? Can I have the spelling? Can I please use it in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> the topic today is Brannock device. Brannock device. Always. That's always. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I would like to circle. It would be funny though if like your first instinct had just been right this whole time. I kind of. It would be funny. I wish that was actually the case, but unfortunately. Oh, darn. <laughs> it's also not the thing, not the torture device used for treating jaundice. No. And I know that it's not. Although. I don't know yeah. what that's called. No, then there must be some sort of name for it, but that's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so a Brannock device is. Uh, that steel foot measuring thing that's at every single shoe store you've ever been to in your entire life. Also a form of torture. Also a form of torture. You weren't far I, off as far as like weird, like. I mean, that, that's, it's not that, yeah, it's not, not unrelated to the glass jar on the stomach. <laughs> They're siblings. <laughs> every time I'm you did not the last time I used one of those. There's Where? like a certain point you get to and you don't need them anymore, right? Right. Like my feet haven't feet changed change. size in yeah. years. Well, that's why they're, they're similar to a torture device is because it is reminiscent of buying shoes that you didn't even probably want to be buying potentially. So you were being dragged to buy new shoes. I don't know. I remember one time my mom took me to 
I, I mean, JC Penny or something because she had a coupon or something. And they're like, that was in the day when you had shoe salesmen, like they would mm -hmm. like, they would actually use the brand device and find your shoe size and then go to the back and come out with a few options for you. I mean, it was sneakers. I don't understand why they needed to do this big thing for sneakers, but um, well, because I remember before the Brannock device, <laughs> they used a block of wood. <laughs> well, they also did x-rays back in like the forties, fifties. They would have, you would put, you would put on the shoes and you would stand in this thing and you would see your feet through them. That doesn't sound like, they fit. there's good sounds long highly inefficient. Health, health issue. Um, so anyway, this guy is like, help me try and choose. And he's like, maybe next time you could wear clean socks. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I was a kid. I was eight or nine. What did I care? But it, it, now that I have a kid around that age, I'm like, I mean, buddy, I got him here. Like, sorry. <laughs> you know, like. He had just like, reached the so, same. Okay, so this yeah. this this dovetails into like uh, parenting style and and whatnot. Um, did that moment affect your future like thought around whether or not you have clean socks? Did you every time every day after that decide? I mean, obviously it's it's a strong enough memory that you can retell it now, however many years later, thirty years later or whatever. Um, did that moment then change like how you view yourself and where you are in the world? And like the next day, like instead of wearing the same socks you wore the day before, like actually I'm going to put on some new, some clean socks. Like did that affect, did that kind of shaming affect your future uh, decision-making? I don't think so. No. Okay. I mean, I'm sure I wore clean socks for a couple of days after that, but I try not to wear socks at all these days. Um, and when I do like, they better be like bright and loud and something to look at. And when they smell bad, I throw them in the dirty clothes. I mean, my socks. There are so many other things you can judge me on. My socks, like, come on. There's yeah. so many. I love that you're like, look, if you're going to be prioritizing judgment, it's not going to be the socks that are going to be the problem. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're trying to hurt me, I mean, like, haha, you got dorky socks. Like, I know, right? They're awesome. I, it, whatever. I, oh, wait, we switched from dirty socks to dorky socks. That's a whole different. That is a different thing. Like, well, that's ha, you got dirty socks. I mean, I, yeah, they smell bad. I, you know, I have my sandals right now have a really bad funk, and I've I've rinsed them and tried to get rid of it, and it's way less than it was. But yeah, you know, if the smell bothers you, I'm working on it. Might be time for new sandals. It it might be. Happen. I just bought these sandals two years ago, so it's that's nowhere near your time for. But wait, wait, well, like. Per use, like if you're just wearing sandals all the time, if you're wearing right. them every day. Because you live in Florida. My, my last <laughs> yeah. pair lasted over a decade, like of pretty much daily use for like year round, except for like special occasions. Like I kind of wear sandals when we go out to dinner, like Ron and I go out on a date. Oh right? no, I put on I'm, socks and shoes, but. I'm on board. I have a, I have two pairs of flip flops. One is my formal pair and one <laughs> is my non-formal pair. I'm on board so, with the sandal situation. <laughs> even when it's like 30 degrees in Florida, right? Like. Long pants, long sleeve shirt, jacket. I'm like, ah, I can still do sandals today. And I'm wearing sandals. So I have cold feet most of the winter. Like I might, I might hate winter less if I, I put on socks, but you know, I don't know. Um, so anyway, I just, so the last pair, like the strap finally tore out and I bought basically the same pair, same size on Amazon and just kept on rolling with the same sandals, just less worn out. I mean, they're not even cool sandals. They're like the, the Tivo, like, you know, straps around three sections of your foot. And... Well, so, you back, can so, back to my, so back to my question, I'm glad that that uh, asshole uh, uh, shoe salesman did not change your future behavior. Because I, the, the assumption and theory that I operate under is that shaming is not the best way of doing things and so if you said yes absolutely i completely think about this thing every single day and like it relive it every day when i'm putting on socks um the fact that you're not like that means that i am, my theory is accurate <laughs> perhaps of the things i was shamed about as a child that is very low on the list <laughs> it's, it's possible yeah or 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 I, actually I, I, my real theory on that is um i i think that like i was just a like a wild kid so i was like you know i just assume all kids had stinky feet you know well i said all kids wore dirty socks to get shoes i mean i'm not a parent but don't they <laughs> right. isn't that like 
If you're, I, I mean, I'm fairly certain that's true. I don't. No. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> like if kids kids are out and running about and I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, the kids get. I mean, my son is so sweaty. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so he smells bad, and it's like he's eight. So we have this like you know. Do we need to shower every day at the age of eight? Yes, yes you do. Deodorant every day at the age of eight, right? But he's eight, so some days you're like, dude, you smell like garlic. <laughs> Let's get you in the shower. Yeah, he's not gonna be shaved, he's just like, eh. Use your I'll be clean when I get it. be an excellent teenager. I can sense this already. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. It's gonna be <laughs> So it's usually at this point in the show that we have some questions. Uh, you can oh, so many questions. Questions. You can always submit your questions through the website. Oh, those questions. Yes, those questions. Uh, you can submit I your questions through the website. There's a form on the website uh, where you can enter your questions. You can also ping us on Twitter and ask your questions there. Uh, if you do ask your questions, and we don't have to uh, answer the questions that Allison has submitted, but right now those are the only questions that we have. So we're going to ask, uh, ask ourselves Allison questions. Um, and with three minutes and 20 seconds left, I'm going to choose this one, which is what's your favorite section of a museum era, geographical focus, ology, et cetera. Mm. You could also um. answer, I hate museums, how dare you? <laughs> but. I feel like this was a safe space as far as this crap. Yeah, I like um, museums in <laughs> all their forms. My dog apparently is not a fan of museums. <laughs> what is going on this episode? Why? Why is there so much noise? Everybody has something to say. <laughs> yeah, so opinionated. Um, gosh, I, I like museums in general. Like, there's not a part of a museum where I'm like, oh, we're in the whatever section. So. But if you had like a limited amount of time, so you're just like, ooh, I have like an hour and a half to kind of like blitz through some section in this museum, where are you gonna head to first? I always find aviation fascinating. So if there's like an aviation section, definitely hitting that. Um, when like an entire area is devoted to one person um, and like the, the arc of their life or whatever they're known for, either as like a musician or an artist or engineer whatever the case may be like to all the all the periphery stuff that goes along mm. with that i find fascinating that makes them a whole person and not just that one slice where we know of you would like the johnny cash museum then i probably would yeah yeah um well having just been to denver and actually going to the museum of nature and science there uh i can like give a real world so we didn't go through the whole thing because we only had a couple hours it was my son's birthday and we wanted to do stuff after so uh, no, it wasn't my son's birthday. Yeah, it was my son's birthday. No, wait, what time? Whatever. Uh, we only had a couple hours. We're not going to challenge you on it. <laughs> <laughs> you might not yeah, even my, have to. For my son's birthday, we went to Eli for my son's birthday, we went to Elitch Gardens, which is a amusement park in in downtown Denver. So this was actually the day before. Anyway, so we're only there for a couple hours because it was closing. Uh, uh, we had done stuff in the morning. It was it was on it was Sunday because I had done uh, workshops. No, this is relevant. Um, so the two things that I, that were there that I was happy that we went through were they had a, they had a section on mummies, which I'm less excited about mummies and more just generally Egyptology. I'm super interested in Egypt, Egyptian mythology, uh, in particular. Um, so that was cool. Went there, checked out all the, all the Egyptian stuff, um, and listened to the guy, uh, describe the jars, uh, the that we were buried with the um, with the mummies to a group of like eight year olds, which was amazing. Um, and then also there is a like ancient life uh, section uh, where it had like you know dinosaur cast bone casts and like you know what's what was native in in uh, in Denver and in, in Colorado, which isn't much because for large stretches of time Colorado was just underwater. Uh, whereas portions of Utah was not so like we have lots of bones and they have lots of like fishy things um, and uh, Yeah, but I, I'm interested in, in that sort of stuff and I was really interested in Thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. 
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.